How many roads must a man walk down? Israel has really become in the West the, the garbage can, if you will, of all the sins, I would say, of European history. People hurl, hurl all kinds of accusations against Israel and against Zionism from, from being racist to being genocidal to being apartheid-like to being Nazi-like. The Assembly of 2008 adopted 20 resolutions condemning Israel and six on all other 191 countries, including the United States. The Human Rights Council has a permanent agenda. It has ten items on it. One of them is about human rights situations that require the Council's attention. And one of them is about human rights violations by Israel alone. One out of ten items only on Israel. The Human Rights Council has had ten regular sessions and five emergency special sessions only to condemn Israel. We interviewed 5,000 people in Europe uh, and we interviewed 500 people in 10 European countries where we looked at notions of their perceptions of Jewish people and looked at ideas of classical anti forms of anti-Semitism. We asked them questions about how uh, Jewish people conduct themselves in business and whether they stay to themselves too much. So classical notions and questions regarding anti-Semitism. And then we asked them a series of questions regarding Israel, very, very extreme questions like the Israeli Defense for Forces purposely shoot children, uh, that the Israelis are polluting water. Very extreme notions about Israel which we hear from time to time. And what we found is there's a very strong correlation between classical anti-Semitism and what we call Israel bashing. And what we found is staggering. What we found was that on the one hand, uh, those who are considered to be anti-Semitic in these European countries are quite low. It's uh, between 6 and 10 percent, depending on the country in question, which is not terrible. Um, and what was surprising, though, was that among the groups of people that are very extreme in their view, their anti-Israel view, that their level of anti-Semitism was 13 times higher than the average population. So. In, in, the, in some cases, 66% of the population, of the group of people that were very anti-Israel were actually classically anti-Semitic. There's a boycott movements started by people on the left in, in England and France and, and Canada, um, which really aims to not only damage Israel, but I would say even to destroy Israel. But I guess intellectually and philosophically, we have to expose this horrific contradiction that how can people parade themselves um, to be anti-racist, to be in favor of, of women's rights, of migrant rights, of gay rights, of uh, workers' rights, when they're in bed with some of the most pernicious reactionary governments and forces on the face of the earth. And I think that needs to be exposed, um, that people who don't respect the other, who pe people who are, are social movements which want to deny the existence of the other, literally, have no place at the table of family of nations. Um, and I think that needs to be understood. And I think there's a perception of human rights and even the politics of multiculturalism that w some liberals in the West, I think, are misguided in a way. And they, they perceive that multiculturalism means the inherent acceptance of everything that is different to all cultures and peoples that are different. And I think that's very seriously misguided and very dangerous. So now it's okay to say that Israel is an apartheid state, which is such an absurd lie, a lie that's totally disconnected from reality. Apartheid was a, a very specific type or series of laws that existed in South Africa which subjugated people, which denied people basic human rights and the right to vote and the right to, to live and to marry and go to certain schools. Israel is a democracy. All of its citizens, Christian, Jewish, Muslim citizens, atheist citizens, vote. There's a strong civil society, civic society, a free press, there's a, a vibrant university and NGO culture, and yet people in the West say that Israel is an apartheid state, a colonial state, a Nazi state, and this is becoming part of um, a very damaging rhetoric. That's why anti-Semitism marches under the cover, as it were, of anti-racism, where uh, Israel uh, is uh, ascribed the two great evils of the 20th century, that, namely apartheid and Nazism as a kind of prologue or justification for the dismantling of Israel as a Jewish uh, state. 
in, indeed, if you add to it that Israel is a Nazi state, it makes that dismantling uh, not only a moral a, a imperative, but legally obligatory, because a Nazi state should not be able to continue. So under the banner of the struggle against uh, racism, which, to which we all subscribe, uh, you call for, in effect, the dismantling of the Jewish state through this scurrilous indictment and moral hypocrisy. The, the next and last indicator that I'll mention is what I call legalized anti-Semitism. By legalized anti-Semitism, I'm speaking to that which uh, takes place under the protective cover of the United Nation, invokes the imprimatur of international law, marches under the banner of human rights, a case study of which is the UN Human Rights Council, the repository of standard setting in international law, and which of its first th 32 resolutions of condemnation 26 single out one member state in the international community, namely Israel, a clear denial of international due process. I, I don't believe there's a human nature that necessarily dislikes or is fearful of the other. I think that's a learnt uh, process. And I think if you look at children, young children, they don't distinguish between difference like adults do. So it's definitely something that we're taught and uh, based on the values and ideology and beliefs uh, of the society. The notion of, of difference needs to be guided by, a, I think, a set of ethics that it's okay if there's difference. We're not, people are not all the same. There are differences in, in this world and, and thank God there are differences in this world. Um, but I think the idea is not to be afraid to say there's difference, but the, the thing that's very important is what guides our perception of the other. How do we treat the other? How do we perceive the other? How does our societies integrate and respect the other? And the ethics of this sort of the, the space which guides notions of belonging and otherness is the key, I think, to, to understand and to, to be, it's a space that needs to be, I think, practiced more efficiently.